Hi and welcome to this DCP web tutorial. In today's tutorial we're going to start the second part of this bookkeeping tutorial and if you remember in our first tutorial we created this Excel or well, this open office document spreadsheet which was called our invoice tracker and the goal of this spreadsheet was to track every single invoice that we send out to our customer and record some information the date they paid how did they pay us the reference on the on the transaction itself so if it was a bank transfer the customer will normally put a reference in the type of job that we did for the customer the company name and the excluding that the VAT and the amount they paid and whether it was paid or not so you can see all the blue ones have not been paid and all the green ones have been paid and we just use this spreadsheet to keep track of who's paid us and when we sent them the invoice and what's outstanding so this is quite important to track so in this tutorial we're going to focus on creating a an, an actual invoice so we're going to make an invoice using open office calc we're going to design it and make it from scratch and um, this is what we're going to actually send to our customers the actual invoice itself so this is tracking the invoice but we need to now actually um, create this template so we can create the actual invoice itself so I'm going to go to open office calc and create a new blank document I'm going to file save as and in your folder you should see this one file called invoice tracker what we created last time it's just this one file you need to create a new folder called invoices so just right click here go to new folder create a folder here click there and just re rename it and call it invoices and when you create that folder you need to double click and go inside and create another new folder so right click create another new folder and call that invoice template and then open up that, that folder and create a new document called invoice template dash zero one so you can see I've written that in here invoice template zero one so I'm going to save this document and we've got a blank spreadsheet now so first thing we want to do is sort out the column widths it's quite important and what we'll do is we're going to highlight all of the spreadsheets so we we'll click on this little blank square in the corner here which will highlight the whole spreadsheet and just to make sure just one thing to make sure is that your zoom is set to 120% here 120 so you may need to move down or up on this on this slider I use the plus sign to set it to 120% which will make it easier to view so we're going to highlight the whole spreadsheet now click on this little blank box right click on the letter A up here and then click on format sorry click on column width here and set the column width to 1.76 centimeters and click OK that's going to make all the column widths this particular size then we need to set the column I to column width to 2.15 centimeters and that's it we can save our document the next thing we're going to do is go to file and then page preview here and we go to format page and we're going to go to footer and turn off the footer so turn it off and go to the header and turn the header off as well and click OK and you can click close preview so one thing we need to make sure we have available let's just check this if you see up here on the top navigation we need to make sure this show draw functions is available if you if I close it the draw functions down here will be removed so you need to make sure draw functions are available so click on this little button up here and that will show the tools down here and we want to create a text field here and you'll get this little mouse cursor show we're going to drag a text area here and we'll go down to row one two three four five so we're going to go to one two three four five and we're going to go up to about G here something like this this sort of space And inside of here we're going to type in our address so we need to we should also write a line so click write a line here 
that's going to put all the data on the right side and we're just going to, I'm going to make up an address but you'll put your company address in here so um, I'm just going to put example company uh, we'll put in fact let's just put Unit one seventy seven. Just making this address up. And we've got a telephone number as well. And um, there's one other thing we need to do. If you've got a, an extra blank space here, just move your mouse cursor to the bottom and hit the backspace key just to delete that, that little extra space that we don't need. So we can click out of here now, so just double click somewhere else. And you notice when we click on these cells, it's set to Arial 10, here, Arial 10. But when we click inside of here, so we double click back inside of this text area, it's set to Times Roman, Roman 12. So we're gonna set this to Arial. So let's highlight all of the text here and we'll set it to, let's get to Arial. And we'll also set that to 10. That way all of our fonts will be consistent. You can make it a bit larger if you want. You can set it to 12 if you want, a little bit bigger. That, that should be okay. Arial 12. And um, let's just save this. Let's just go back to our page preview. And we can see our address here now. And you can imagine our logo is going to be on this side here somewhere, our logo, our company logo. So let's just close this for the minute. And we'll, we'll come back and do the logo a little bit later, but let's just focus on some other things here. So I'm going to highlight this row number seven. I'm going to highlight all of this row number seven up to here. So just left click on this first cell and drag all the way across to highlight it. And then I'm going to right click. In fact, we can probably do it this way. So we can click on this button here called Merge Cells. So we click on Merge Cells here. And that's going to make this one solid cell. It's merged all the cells together. And we're going to double click inside of here. And we're going to type in Invoice. We're going to click back on this cell here, the one we just merged with invoice written inside, and we're going to center align it. And we're going to make it bold, and we're going to increase the font size to something like 14. That should be okay. So let's just save this again and preview. So we can see the word invoice written here, and our address is here. And one other thing we want to do is click back on this cell here. And we're going to go to this tool, the borders tool, and we're going to set it to top border here, this one here. So the second row, first option right here. And we'll save it one more time. And this will draw a line above. So when we preview it, we can see a line above here. And in fact, um, we'll put a line below as well. So let's, we still selected this cell here. We can go here and uh, we'll set we we'll set it to top and bottom, which is this one here. So click on this one here. This will put a line above and below. And we can also right click on this cell and go to format cell. And in the border section, so normally it starts on numbers here. You just click on borders and in borders, we'll set this to 90, 90. And click OK. And that will just give us a bit more space around the cell. Let's preview it one more time. Page preview. And now we can sell, see um, the update we just made here. OK, we're going to close this. Let's just save it. And we're going to highlight these four here. One, two, three, four, these four cells. 
and we're going to merge them as well and we're going to leave a gap in the middle and we're going to highlight these four here and we're going to merge those as well so now you can see we've got these three cells two big ones and one small one in the middle we're going to write well we're going to double click inside this cell here and we're going to type in invoice number and on this side we're going to type in date and we're going to put a date in now so let's just we'll go back to our spreadsheet this invoice tracker and we've got the date the invoice date was 26 of the 5th 2015 so it was the 26 of the 5th 2015 we're going to click on this cell and right align it and then the invoice number we'll just copy this put that into here we're going to click on this cell right click format cell and also set this to 90 the cell spacing and we're going to do the same with this one here as well format cell and set this to 90 and then we're going to click on this one more time and we're going to draw a box around it which will be this one here and we'll do the same with this one now we've got two boxes around there let's save this preview we can zoom in a bit so we're starting to make the header of our template we've got the invoice so we, the customer knows exactly what this document is we've got our address here we're going to have a logo here a bit a little bit later we'll make the logo put that in here we've got the invoice number which is very important this is a unique number and you can see all of the invoice numbers here that we generated so each one of these document invoices we create will have a unique number we can see the dates down here and these will be the dates that we put in here for the invoice itself so we close this and next we're going to need to create a shipping details invoice uh, the, the company invoice name and shipping details in my business I run a website company so I don't really ship my products to anyone I'm, I don't do any posting everything is done via the internet but in your business you may be shipping a product to a customer so we need to create um, a little block of information here so we're gonna again highlight these four here but as we highlight these four holding that left mouse button we need to move down we're gonna move down one two three four five six seven so we're gonna move down one two three four five six seven seven by four we're gonna highlight this section here in fact um, let's do this slightly different way we do we do something slightly different what we'll do is we'll highlight this first row and we'll merge this cell let's merge these ones and we we'll do the same on this side as well then one two three four let's go down one two three four five rows and we'll go across so we'll highlight this block here and we'll merge those ones as well and we'll do the same on this side and we're going to merge one more at the bottom here like that if we highlight these three we can go to our border tool and set it to um, this option here at the bottom right hand corner and this will draw a border around everything and we'll do the same on this side highlight these three and draw a border around everything and in here we're going to put the company name so if we look back at our spreadsheet the first invoice we created was for company XYZ so we copy that we're going to paste it into here and this is going to be the, the billing details on this side and in here we're going to write ship to and inside this box we need to put an address so I'm just going to make this is a company 
In fact, let's do one more thing. We're going to highlight these three here. Right click, format cell, and set it to 90 here. The padding. And we do the same on this side. Let's just save this. And in here we need to put an address. This is the company that you're sending the invoice to. So I'm going to make this up. You can see it's... Okay, let's just continue typing it. Unit 7. Now we're going to have a problem here. So let's click in here and delete this data. Let's see a small problem. So we have to do this slightly different way. We're going to use the, the text tool here. And we're going to drag a box in here where we can type in the address, like this. And now we can type in the address and we can have the spacing correct. So we'll call it unit 7. This is the address where you're going to be sending the invoice to. If you're going to send it digitally, then you still need to put the address in there. But um, normally I'll create a PDF out of this and just send it via email. But you still need to put the company's address details in there anyway. So I'm going to highlight this information here and set it to Arial. So set it to Arial and set it to 10. And in fact, we can probably put the postcode on a new line here. And when we click out of the cell, we can click back on it one more time and press Control C and then Control V. And that should make a copy. Then we can just drag the copy across to here. This makes our life. We should have copied it. We didn't. Okay, we have to do that manually. So let's uh, click on this text tool again. We'll drag another box out in here. And I'm just going to click in here, select this text. And paste it into here. That didn't work quite right. So, text tool. I'm going to have to type it in. If I don't type anything in here, if I type test, I'll just type in it actually. I'll copy this overwrite this if you don't type anything into the box and you click out of it then it's going to delete the box so you need to type something temporary so you can cut from here and paste over here let's just explain these two let's just do one more thing down here we'll put telephone the contact number for this company and this telephone number may be slightly different could be the same Be different these are just made up phone numbers let's put tell in here so let me explain these two here let's just make uh, let's click on this cell and make it bold and we'll click on this one and make it bold as well and we're going to double click inside this this cell here and highlight invoice number and make that bold and we'll highlight this date text here and make that bold so the reason why we've got two addresses um, like I explained in my business I run, you know, I do a lot of web development work, graphic design work, and when I complete a project, I send the work to my customer um, via email. So if it's graphic design or internet, whatever it might be, it's all done via email. But in your business, you may be shipping physical product, and the company that you're shipping to, or the company that you're billing to, may not necessarily be the same destination that you're shipping to. And where it says company name here, if, if someone's ordered a product from you, a personal uh, some uh, an actual person's order it then you put the person's name in here and their address and their telephone number um, but if it's a company sometimes the headquarters will be where you bill to and where you're shipping to might be a different address a, a different branch of the company this is why we have two separated if you're internet-based business and you're not really doing any 
physical shipping then you can almost leave this block this this section blank you don't really need to put any details in here because you're always billing in um, the same company and you're sending everything via email so you're not really shipping any product I hope that makes sense if, if that's confusing in any way then uh, send me a little message on um, YouTube and I'll try and explain that a bit better but it's pretty straightforward let's just save this so now we need to start generating the data to um, capture what work we've done so to do this we're going to highlight this row here and we're going to highlight the first three cells in fact we can do the first four cells so we do these same four cells here and we're going to merge them and then we're going to leave this one these two let's leave this one as one cell here these two we're going to merge and these two we're going to merge and let me just try one thing here. I'm going to control C, copy it, paste it down. Yeah, we can do it this way. So we've got these cells here. We've got one big one here, one in the middle, and two other ones here. We're going to highlight all of them. We're going to right click on them and format cell. And we're going to set it to 90 again, all 90s, and click OK. And then we're going to go to our borders tool and set it to this option here. It's going to draw a border around all of these. <clears throat> now we're going to highlight with our mouse all of these cells here and we're going to control C so we're going to go to edit copy control C and we're going to go down one row and control V and paste and then we're going to click inside of this we're going to highlight all of these as they already are so we're going to highlight this second row right click format cell and set it back to set it to 40 and click OK it's going to make it slightly smaller because it's going to be our headings here and this is going to be our data so we're going to highlight this second row now again copy it control C and then go down to row 21 and press control V to paste and we're going to keep pasting these down we want around 10 in here, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, let's do 12. That should be fine, 12 should be fine. And in this first cell up here, we're going to type in product description. And in here, we're going to type in quantity. And in here, we're going to type in unit price and here we're going to type in net I'm going to highlight this center align it and make it bold let's just right click on these and go to format cell and in the font section let's see font effects in font color we're going to choose white and then in background we're going to select black and click OK so we're going to invert the colors here we'll save this and let's just see how our documents look in prop page preview so we can see we're generating this invoice now it's looking decent so let's close this and we need a few more extra things down here so we're going to need to merge these two cells here to so select all in fact we should be able to click on this cell here the one above click on it control C to copy and then click on this cell and paste it and we're going to do three of these one two three so select this cell copy it and then move down and paste it so you merge these cells together just saves just saves a lot of time having to right click and merge the cells and sort out all the format you're copying this format and pasting it down basically let's just save this and these two cells here in fact we don't really need to do that so what we can do is just um, in this cell here we're going to write in total cost 
in here we're going to write total VAT and here we're going to write total charge and we're going to select all three of these and then right align them here and we can make them bold actually so I select all three of them and make them bold let's just save this let's just see if that's a bit too close it looks a bit too close so let's just check it needs to add a little bit of space in there so <clears throat> we'll select these three cells we're going to right click format cell go to uh, borders and we'll set them to 90 gives us a bit more space so here's we, here we're going to have our grand total tour. we're going to have our VAT in here and then we'll have our uh, well, this will be our net total, this will be our VAT and this will be our grand total here so normally on the invoice we'll put our business details, our banking details so the customer knows how to pay or where to pay so we're going to right click and highlight this row so we're going to leave a gap here and we're going to right click and highlight row 36 we're going to merge that cell and we're going to select this cell here and control C to copy and we're going to select this cell here and paste it and we're going to do that four times so we should have one two three four five in total here and we're going to set our borders here so we want this border tool here gives us all our borders and we'll right click format cell and also set this to 90 and in this top one we're going to write something like payment to be made to the following bank account and we'll put our bank account details below so we, they're going to need to know the name of the bank we'll call this uh, just bank that's the name of the bank you need the account name so this is your company account name on the bank account itself so I'm just going to put in here example XYZ company limited this will be your company name in here or the name on the bank account itself and this is the name of the bank that you're banking with and here we normally have an account number just make this up and last of all we normally have a sort code and we can click on this cell here right click on it format cell set the font font effect set it to white and set the background to black click OK and we need to make it bold so let's save this let's preview so now we've got our banking details there so when the customer looks at this invoice they'll see the invoice number the date the invoice was sent their details and where it was shipped to they'll see all of the individual jobs that you did and they'll also see the total cost for those individual jobs the net amount the total that you're charging VAT and the total, the grand total, the total charge including VAT. They'll see your banking details as well. They'll see some banking details here as well. So let's close this. And We should also put some payment terms here so we're going to click on this sort code cell here we're going to control C to copy edit copy and we use control V to paste so we're going to leave a gap here and go to 42 and control V to paste it 
So that will just do all the formatting quickly for us. And in here we're going to type in payment terms and we're going to write 30 days from invoice date. And um, we're going to right click format cell go to font effects set it to white and set the background to black and we'll make it bold so what is this telling the customer that they need to pay the invoice within 30 days from the invoice date here whether they pay you or not is another question that is why you have an invoice tracker so that you can see when you send the invoice and when they've paid, if they're paid within that time frame that you set out. Normally when you quote a job, you'll say that the, the payment needs to be within 30 days. On quite a few jobs, if I do jobs that are you know, of a larger value, then normally I'll take a 50% deposit, do the job, and then 50% when I complete. So that's a, that's a good way to do it on larger jobs. Small jobs, just it's not so important. It's up to you. So... Down here at the very bottom, we're going to go and create um, what we do. We can highlight what we do is uh, let's highlight this. Um, first this row here so we leave a gap here as well we'll highlight this first row and we merge these cells is there a quicker way of doing this let's think probably is let's copy this sort code one so let's copy this control c to copy and we paste it here and we'll paste it one more time so we've got two of them here and we just click on there and delete this data inside and we we'll select both of them and let's merge them together you need to click on merge cell twice so we've got a little box in here and we'll say additional And we're going to right click on this cell format cell and go to alignment and we'll say let's see alignment top okay so nice line to the top and in here you can write any notes that you want about this particular job or invoice or this particular customer um, you may give them more than 30 days you may have some terms in there you might say invoice can be paid within the next 90 days for whatever terms or any notes that you need to put in here about the invoice only two lines so it's quite short and simple but you can make this bold as well maybe you can just put in some brief notes if you need to put any notes in here about this particular job i, I rarely ever use this but it's there if you need to use it to make some additional notes at the very bottom of this document this row 52 you need to really put in your registration information so your company office address the registration address or you should really put in here your company number so we put company number and that's just going to be what what's you know depending on where your business is registered but normally in UK we have a three six seven digit number for our company number so I'm just going to make this up but you put your company number from company's house here and we're going to put um one two three four five so let's say five blank spaces and then we're going to put VAT number and this is normally one two three four five six seven it's normally nine digits I believe or yeah nine digits so it's normally it's 
normally nine digits the VAT number again it really depends on where your business has been registered so this will sit right at the footer and we're going to click on this we're going to highlight this whole row of data and we're going to put a line across the top of it here click on this option here on the borders let's save this let's preview you see our company number at the bottom. It would be nice if this was center aligned. So let's try and center align it. So we we'll select all of these. Let's merge it. In fact, before we do that, <coughs> we'll click on this first cell and we'll go up here and highlight this information here. And we're going to right click or just go to edit, copy, press control C to copy this information. So when we highlight these rows and merge the cells, it's fine. Sometimes it deletes the data, but it looks okay. So we didn't need to really copy it, but we're going to select this cell now and then center it and save it and we'll preview it one more time. So it's centered here now. And in fact, we can right click, format cell, borders and set it to 90. So here we can see all the information of this particular invoice. We need to put a logo in here. So let's um, let's try and do that now. So I'm just going to go to my website and I'll take a sample logo from my portfolio. We just use something from here for now. This red temporal one. I'm just going to drag this image to my desktop. And <clears throat> with this particular image, we really need to do some formatting to it before we mo move it into the template here. And if I open it, it's maybe a bit hard to see, but you can see a border here, a white background. And this is all white space here. We need to get rid of as much of this white space as possible because when we put the logo on there, this logo won't really fit very well on here. So you need to contact your graphic designer and get him to help you do this job, this particular job I'm going to do next. But I'm going to show you this anyway, quickly. So what I'll do is I'll open up my image editor. I'm just going to drag this logo in here. And the goal is to get rid of as much white space as possible. So I'm just going to crop out all of the white space, cropping this out. So I want a little bit of white space, but very little at the top. So all of this is going to get cut. I'm going to do the same at the bottom here. And down the sides. I'm going to leave a little white space around the edge in. So I'm just going to crop this. So now you can see there's a very little white space around the edge, and this is quite important. So I'm just going to save this. And now I've got this new image here of the logo. This has got very little white spacing now around the edge. We want it to fit as neatly as possible in here. So I'm not sure if I can just drag and drop this. Well, I can. I can just drag and drop it straight into the document. And I believe if I click on um, the logo, you can see these little green, should be a green one here. Um, what I need to do is when I click on this logo, I want to resize it, but I need to hold down the shift key. If I don't hold down the shift key, it's going to get squashed or distorted. So I need to hold down the shift key to constrain it to make sure that it, that it resizes using the control key. That 
it resizes on its resolution so it doesn't get squashed so that looks pretty good so let's just save this this is just a made up company name and we'll page preview again we can see our logo in here but it's, a, it's probably offline here isn't it we need to scroll across here we need to move this logo you can use the arrow keys on your keyboard to move it in small increments if we preview it now it's sitting right in the top corner here that's what we want is it so you try and get your graphic guy to crop an image or you're a web developer if you can do this yourself if you know how to crop it so you've got minimum white space around the edging of the the graphic here let's just save this so we've basically built a template here now that we can re we can recycle or reuse this template many many times so if we save this and close it and we come back to our folder here we've got this invoice tracker in the main folder inside of this invoices folder we've got an invoice template so i'm going to right click on this and copy i'm going to come back out one directory and paste it here so we're going to re rename this invoice template now and we are going to call it we need to really reference this spreadsheet here just going to shrink this down a little bit so we're going to make this first invoice now and we can replicate this template many many times to make all of these different invoices here one by one and normally you do this as and when you fill this data into the spreadsheet you'll go and make the invoice straight away and send it to the customer so we need to we've got the original template in this folder and we made a copy and we put it onto the the root we could call it we're going to replicate this template many times but we need to rename it so we're going to right click and rename and we're going to call it invoice 001 because this is going to be the first invoice here and after we create the invoice we're going to put in today's well we're going to put in this date here 26 the 5th 2015 so 26 the 5th 2015 and then we're going to put a space a hyphen space and we're going to put in the company name and the company name was xyz that's the company we sent the invoice to so xyz company so we're labeling it this way because it gives us quite a lot of information it gives us the invoice number so which number it was when we sent the invoice to the customer and who the customer is so we'll get three important bits of information from this name here so we're going to double click on this and open up a template and the logo is your company logo so this is always going to stay the same the address is pretty much going to stay the same and the phone number unless you change your address details this invoice is going to stay the same the invoice number is this invoice number here and you can see it's currently correct anyway but when we create our next invoice it will be invoice 002 so we have a 2 at the end and it happens to be the correct date but we'll update the date here based on these new dates or these new invoices so we I'm going to do maybe two or three examples here just to show you so the company name is correct here already we can see that it was called company XYZ I only use this as sample data in the original template so this is why it's all correct here at the moment and in here we need to put logo design so we're going to copy this and put logo design and it was just the one job it was just a logo design the quantity was one we did one logo and what we can do here is um, select all of these cells here all of these cells and we're going to center align and these ones here we're also going to center align as well these three here and the product description will left align it so the unit price what we need to do again actually is select all of these cells here right click format cells and set it to a currency value and select the right currency for your business and click OK I'm using British pounds and we need to highlight these three as well right click format cell and we need to set this to currency and British pounds here as well click OK and the unit price will be the price excluding VAT so it'll be 125 pounds 
and the net price would also be 125 pounds and what we'll do here is um, in fact let's delete this cell so we'll delete the data from here and we're going to say equals Uh, let's check this so if I click on this cell it's called F20 F20 and this cell here is called E20 so we want to say equals F20 multiplied by which is the shift key and number 8 this is the star sign is a multiplication by E20 so 125 so whatever value I put in here if I put 10 in here It'll be 10 times 125 equals 1250. So, that, so we're just using this formula to calculate the grand total. The unit was one, uh, the unit cost was 125, and it, the net will be 125. If it was two, then it will be 250 because we did two logo designs. We did one in, one in this example, you see one uh, 125 here for the unit price. So that's all we did on the job and then the total cost will be in fact um, we can click on this cell drag all the way up and highlight all of these cells so let's escape that so we click on this cell drag all the way up and we do a sum tool here and we save this so if we did another job here we did another job let's say in fact i'll show you this on the second example the second invoice i do um, in this total cost, the VAT, we're just going to type in 25 here, 25. And then on this cell, we're going to select it and drag up and highlight these two above it and do a sum tool as well. Let's escape. Let's just do that one more time. So I'll select this cell and drag up and sum. It should be 150. It's not done that right. Try um, so this is H33 and this is H32, these two cells. So we should be able to do equals H33 plus H32. There we go. You have to type that formula in manually, you can't sum it. So all we're saying is that the total charge is these two values, 125 plus the 25 equals the 150. Let's just save this. There's one thing I want to do quickly is, uh, let's close this document for a minute, so we'll close this. Um, really what we should do is click on this cell, copy it, click on this spreadsheet here, copy, go into our invoice templates and paste it here, then delete this invoice template, because we made some updates to this new one that we didn't do in this original invoice template. So we delete this one. We've got a copy of it now. And we call this one invoice template. Because we made some amendments in here that we didn't do in the original invoice template. So this will be now a correct invoice template. We've got the original invoice in here. So let's just open this one more time. And this invoice is actually completed now. So it it is basically displaying everything that's relevant on this first row of data. So we've got the invoice date, we can see the invoice date here. We've got the invoice number, we can see the invoice number here. We've got the description, which is logo design, we can see that here, logo design. And we've got the company name here. And the shipping name here if you're shipping it to a different address and we've got the xvat price here so this is the unit price and the net of the xvat 
we've got the total charge here so this will be the grand total we've got um, the VAT amount here and then we've got the grand total at the bottom 125 25 and 150 125 25 150 let's just save this and the next thing I'm going to do is click on this PDF and I'm going to go to my desktop And inside this invoice folder, I'm going to save it. Now we've got one original Excel spreadsheet that we used to create this invoice. Let's close this. And we've got a PDF version. So here you can see the PDF version. And you could print this out and send it in the post or you could just attach it to an email and send it to the customer you never ever send the excel spreadsheet to the customer because if you send this excel spreadsheet someone else could quite easily edit this and generate another invoice and send it to someone with some fake bank details or whatever it might be uh, but the pdf you can't really edit this it's, it's fixed data inside of here you could say there are ways to manipulate it but um, anything can be manipulated at the end of the day but <clears throat> this is much more secure people are used to receiving PDF invoices so it should be fine you can just attach this in an email and send it to your customer and that will be that one job invoice sent and then you would wait for payment and then you would mark it off on your invoice tracker so I just want to quickly do one more example where there's more than one job on a particular invoice because this will make a bit more sense hopefully so on this second job it said website design so I'm going to slightly change this I'm going to say website design and uh, let's say business card design times two so when I look at this cell here it's telling me that I did a website design job and I did two different business card designs but the total was £1,000 so we'll say that the website costs 900 and two business cards cost £50 each which will give us a grand total of 1000 so what I'll do here this is, this is where the system you can see it's a bit more efficient so I'll, let's just minimise this a little bit so in this spreadsheet here um, in this this particular invoice I'm going to right click and drag it down so I'm going to hold down my right mouse button and drag it down I'm going to say copy here and you're going to see a copy of it appear at the top here and I'm going to right click and rename and I'm going to say it's invoice number two and you can see the date was the 27th of the 5th so I'm going to change this to the 27th of the 5th and it was a different company it was ABC company so I'm just going to change this to ABC company and I'm going to delete this copy here I'm going to hit enter and it's going to sit below because it's ordered by uh, as default it's ordered by name not by date it's going to be ordered by name this column here and when you create invoice 3 it will sit below in invoice 4, 5, 6, 7 and we'll keep going down the, the, the most recent invoice will be at the bottom so I'm going to double click on this one and in here we need to change some information so you can see at the top here it's called invoice 002 so we just change this to invoice 002 we can see it's the 27th for the 5th so we change this to 27th for the 5th we can see it's called ABC company ABC company and you need to change the address in here and the address in here and the telephone numbers because those will be different from the previous invoice because it was for a different company and in here we're going to write website design and we're going to type in business card design so we're going to show two different jobs and in here we're going to type quantity 2 and quantity 1 for website design and we're going to say it was 900 pounds and in here we're going to say it was 50 pounds and we're going to click on this cell and drag drag it down or we can just click on it copy it and paste it below so we just click on this control C to copy and move down one and paste it it's going to paste the formula so we can see website design 1 900 and it cost uh, 900 pounds one unit quantity two 50 pound cost 100 two times 50 is 100 and then we've got the thousand is the grand total here 
And the only thing that we need to update in here is to make sure we put the correct VAT amount, which was 200. So we need to type in 200 here. And then our 1200 is our grand total. In theory, we could put a formula in here to do the VAT total, but I normally type it in manually because I want to make sure 100% is when I'm typing in these figures, I cross reference it here. If it was all done manually or using formulas, then you're less likely to check it. It's always worth double checking before you send the invoice. So I always double check cross reference. It's a thousand pound grand total, that's correct. It's 200 pound VAT, that's correct. And my grand total is 1200 pound, that's correct. So here you can see another example where we've done two different jobs, but for the same client in the same, let's say, duration, the same uh, date, the work that was invoiced for. But we've got two different quantities. We've got one unit price of 50 here, but it was two jobs done, two different card designs. So it becomes a hundred pound. So hopefully that makes a lot of sense there. So I'm going to save it, print it and click save again. And when I close this, I'm going to see four documents in here. I see two different PDFs. So I will open this one up. Normally I open it up and give it one quick check here, make sure everything's correct. It's correct. Then I just attach it to an email and send it to the client. So I hope that all makes sense and you'll continue to go down this spreadsheet and create a separate invoice for each one of these rows. And your spreadsheet, you know, when you created this particular row of data, you would have went straight away after you've entered in the data, you would have went and made the um, invoice straight away. You wouldn't have filled in this whole spreadsheet and then sent every invoice afterwards. You'd do it straight away. So as soon as the date that you put the data in here, that same day, literally straight afterwards, you'll go and create the invoice. And the nice way to do this is um, is you can just right click on left click on this number two, right click on it, hold it down, drag it down, make a copy here, and then you call it invoice number three, and you put in the date. The date will be the twenty eighth of the fifth. So the twenty eighth of the fifth. The company name would have changed. It would be now one two three company. And you delete this copy. It will sit below. So you can see invoice one, two, three. This is invoice three. This is invoice three here. This is the date, 28th of the 5th, 28th of the 5th. And this is the company, one, two, three company, one, two, three company. You can just open that up, change this to the number three, change this to the 28th. And you can reference that information up here. It will change this to one, two, three company. And you'll change the address details here and the telephone numbers to the correct company details. It's a different company to the previous invoice. And you would see in here you did business card design and it was £95. So you just you can just highlight this text, copy it, paste it into here. You'll delete this row because it's not relevant anymore. And it was £95. That's all done for you. And then the VAT is 19 here, 19. So you put in 19. And you get 140 in total, 140 in. So you can just save this PDF, save it, close it, and your invoice is done. It's, it's taken you literally seconds to do that invoice. Attach that to an email, send it to the customer, and they'll pay. And then you can come back to this invoice tracking spreadsheet and mark it down. They're paid via bank transfer or the check payment. And this is where you do your, your tracking later. Send them the invoice, they pay a few days later. And you mark it down here how they've paid and when they've paid that's how it works so i hope that all makes sense and if you see this example here this one here this is company xyz and we already made an invoice at the top here before we've these two in here um in fact just to make life a little bit easier i'm going to copy this xyz and paste it here I'm going to pretend we did this job for this invoice number four for this company called XYZ. I want to show you this for a reason. So we need to send another new invoice. Let's just call this uh, XYZ. So let's show you um, we did this job for this company and we went to generate this invoice. <coughs> Instead of retyping all the information, we can go to invoice number one right click copy here we can say it's actually invoice number four because it's invoice number four here 
we can change the date to the 29th of the 5th. We can delete this information here. We hit enter, it sits at the bottom here. And when we open it, all we need to do is change this to a number 4 and change this to a number 29. All of the billing details and all the information in here is already correct because you did it in invoice number with the first four invoice you did. So all you're doing is copying this invoice and you know all this information is correct anyway. So now we've got to do is update this information. And it's called SEO month one. Paste that into here. It's 295 pounds. And the VAT was 59. 59. You can save it. PDF. Save that. And you've just created that invoice. Within a few seconds, you've made that invoice. Job done. So, I hope that's all clear. Just to make sure you understand that the data in this spreadsheet, when you created this first row, you would have straight away went and made this first invoice. And when you create the second row, you make that second invoice. And when the customer's paid, you come back into this original tracking spreadsheet and you'll find that particular invoice they paid for and you'll see in your bank statement they paid for this logo design and the correct amount was in there 150 then you mark that green so you highlight it mark it green you'll say that it has been paid yes you put in the reference that they put in the bank transfer and you put in the date that they paid on the bank statement and you also put in the type of payment as a bank transfer we, we went through this in um, the first tutorial in the second tutorial we're actually designing the invoice template and that's what you're going to attach in an email or print out and send to your customer so i hope that's clear uh, if you've got any problems feel free to send me a little message on um, youtube commenting and if you've got any problems i'll try and help you but it should be pretty straightforward i'm just going to save this document and close it and that's the conclusion of this second part of this tutorial in the third part we're going to create one more document which will track your expenditure. This document here is tracking your money coming in. We also need to track what money you're spending. So if you buy a printer ink or a new computer or your telephone bill or your staff wages, we need to track that information as well. So we're going to create a separate document to track that information. So I hope that's all clear. If you've got any problems, feel free to give me a message on YouTube, commenting. I'm going to upload this to YouTube and I look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial.